Hi everyone, in this session we will talk about number of concurrent sessions allowed for each operator in Pega platform. So broadly we will be covering what is the best practice involved here and from my experience I am going to take you through a few examples and we can have a whiteboarding session for a few minutes. Okay, so on that note let me switch to a Pega application. This is a demo environment which I use for my POC purposes. So as soon as you log into Pega, into Dev Studio, so this is my demo application. On the Dev Studio, on the left hand side records tab, you will find this is admin, right? Under that you can navigate to system. By default from Pega, you would receive two systems, but if it is your dev environment or staging environment or production, in your respective production platform or dev platform or staging platform, you will see the respective systems name system names here so you can open one of them assume that this is your real system name in your development environment where you're working in a project right so there once you open you will find the this detail where for a production level which is your development environment for that what is the number of concurrent sessions allowed for each operator by default pega will be providing you this with an option of minus one which means the it is infinite so there is no restriction on the concurrent sessions allowed for each operator just let take let us take a one step back maybe some of you might already be familiar with concurrent sessions but if i have to explain this in a layman terms if you're new to this term concurrent sessions if i am a user i'm logging into pega platform this is one session so what you are seeing on the screen I have logged in into a browser uh, session into Pega. So this is one session. If I at the moment currently on my name, there is only one session, but it can happen. I want to debug some issues so I can start opening multiple windows incognito or different browsers. I keep spinning off multiple sessions for the same Pega platform. So that means if I have, let's say two browsers, one is edge browser and another one is Google Chrome browser. If I open the Pega application in both the browsers, then you can think of Pavan having two separate sessions at the same point in time. So that same point in time sessions, we call them as concurrent sessions. Okay. In this case, I'm taking my operator as an example, but if you take Pega platform, not only Pavan, if let's say 10 developers have access to this platform, if they're all logging in at the same point in time, into two different browsers in the same example at the same point in time. So 10 into two, that means 20 concurrent sessions are there on the Pega platform. If I have a user base of 500 in the platform, so all the 500 users will be logging in at the same point in time. Answer may be no, maybe only 200 users might be logging in from the London times from the Europe time zone or from the India time zone right or from some other time zone likewise you take your application what is the user base how many number of concurrent sessions can be active at any point in time that is like for the whole user base that is fine but now in this session we're not talking about that we are only talking about concurrent sessions per operator that means if you take pavan as an example I might need mostly one session as a developer or sometimes I open incognito window to debug some other things. If you take user, what users will do is they try to keep three, four sessions active so that they can compare things with each other. I've seen most of the customers having two separate sessions so they can tally things between both the sessions, which is fine. That's okay. That's the ways of working between the users, right? And, uh, but it's up to the freedom uh, of the users, whatever the way they want to use the application. That is okay. But do we really need the number of sessions as more than 10? So far in the applications where I have worked on, I've never seen any use case where one system needs 10 concurrent sessions for the same operator. If you have come across some use case, you can ping here. So what I have always ensured is whatever project I am in, when it is starting from the scratch, I used to give a lower value here instead of minus one. So minus one means it is an infinite value. It's always good to change this to a finite value. And any change that you're doing on this system rule 
for that to come into effect you need to restart your server hope that is clear so having said that so minus one should be changed to a finite number infinite to finite that is the message now how much I, I heard people saying hey once I change this what if there is an impact on the system if you are starting scratch if your application is fresh in the beginning itself if you make the system that is a good place to start with because you don't have much built even if you face any use case which needs more than 10 concurrent sessions per user you can validate them right that's like a proper gatekeeping task but most of the cases you will be in a project where you are working on something already the setting will be set to minus one and we see people getting scared to change this from minus one to a finite value if that is the case start with something like 20 or 15 or 10 don't take aggressive decisions like changing it to one or two because i've seen this i've seen some of the users who logs in from office end users they log in in couple of uh, browsers or they have two sessions open Timeout is not enabled on that environment and they log in from home after office work hours. When they try to log in, it restricts them saying, hey, you have already utilized the maximum number of requesters or sessions on your name. You cannot proceed. That becomes a blocker for end user to access the system. To avoid those situations, don't go with aggressive values like one, two, three. Keep it a bit higher. Something like start with 10 and start reducing that. And any time if someone comes up with a use case where the number of concurrent sessions per each operator has to be greater than 10, definitely you should question the use case, question the business or question the requirement or question yourself to ensure that you're logically covered with the explanation. Okay, this is my input to you. And now you can imagine what can go wrong if we don't take care of this setting in reality. All right. So. I can also go through this in a whiteboarding, but just verbally I'm trying to cover it first. What happens is if someone tries to get access to your Pega platform and they somehow got access to one of the operator, one operator ID details got compromised and they have some bad intentions to take out the reputation of your firm. So what they can do, these hackers or someone who wants to defame uh, or have some intention to take out the credibility of the application or the customer or the vendor, whatever it is. So what they can do is with that one operator, they can spin off n number of sessions. It can be, you might be surprised. Sometimes you might see if this is not taken care, 2000, 3000 sessions on the same username. That means you will be having so many concurrent sessions on the same operator. Or you might ask me a question hey what can go wrong if this happens so each session on pega platform if it is active it is going to consume some resources like if you go to your pdc if your application is on pega cloud go to the resource utilization on pdc and you will see how much memory it is consuming or how much i mean heap memory it is consuming or how much of cp utilization it is going through imagine there are 2000 to 2000 to 5000 sessions on the same requesters on the same operator at the same point in time then it will utilize how many resources on your pega platform and how much of hygiene is lost on your system all the other genuine sessions will suffer the crunch of the resources of the load right so there are potential issues where i have seen where that those things can bring down the servers as well it can bring the instability to your system. So that sounds a bit scary, right? So we do not want to end up in any of those situations. When the impact sounds so huge, the solution is so simple. The best practice from Pega is to ensure this setting, whatever you're seeing on the screen is changed from an infinite value to a finite value. Okay, start with some decent number and then uh, start working towards this know this impact start implementing it in a proper manner and you will see the benefits out of it hope this helped you if this has helped you please feel free to comment if you need a whiteboarding where you want me to talk about the real example we can also do that uh, based on the comments or the feedback then I'm going to do the whiteboarding or else I'll 
keep it simple as we discussed in this session thank you